Um, I have to, as a, as a rheumatologist, hypermobility is one of those things that make me go. Oh. Dinosaurs. Why Dinosaurs. does it make you go like that? <laughs> Why does it make me go like that? Yeah. Because most people, because hyper, hypermobility is, it, 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 hypermobility syndrome is actually quite common. Um, and most people with hypermobility have symptoms for other reasons than because they've got hypermobility. Um, and by the time you see somebody who's got hypermobility, it's too late to do anything about it. Um, there are subgroups of people who have other weird stuff going on. So I did push this together. I have to say, I nicked this presentation from somebody else, so if there's any American in it, I'm very, very sorry. Sorry. Um, so Ellis Daniel syndrome, that's the one that everybody talks about. Um, so they've got a couple of cases on here. Basically, somebody, 18 year old girl, um, knee pain, patellar instability, kneecap instability, fair lots of things, you can say some Americans, we're not allowed to use this, uh, soon basically it's a viscous supplement, we're not allowed to use this in the NHS anymore, works really well. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed to use it. We Why? used to. Why? Why? Yes. And that's why it's cheap to save money. They told us we couldn't use it. We used, we used a lot of it. Actually, it was costing our department £5,000 a week to use it, so we just had to pull the plug on the service. Which was a shame, because a lot of people did very well. Um, lots of things done. Gave up the cross, soccer, horse riding, that sort of stuff. Um, easy bruising, other skin symptoms. Beta score 8 out of 9. Pest pain, it's laxative, and joint skin normal. Next patient, um, uh, shoulder pain, uh, bruising, long bruising. Uh, Bacon's got 8 out of 9. The last one, 15 year old, shoulder pain, hip subluxation, very dramatic. Uh, Bacon's got 2 out of 9. So, what are these? So, first one, Bacon, do you know about the Bacon index? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, you don't need to talk then, really, do you? So, that's what I'm <laughs> um, so the first one's got is hypermobile, the second one is, the third one is not. So just because you have, you can have regional hypermobility where you just get one bit and it just pops out. We do see that, but that's not really this you know, hypermobility syndrome. Um, and it is, it is uh, <coughs> relative, it's supposed to be relatively uncommon. I have to say, hypermobility <coughs> per se by base index criteria is actually relatively common. And particularly younger people. I mean, there's always a couple of people in the room that are hypermobile who can do good things. Um, uh, and these are the symptoms you know to, to, to look out for. Uh, it so is, a patient with a low beacon score wouldn't be classified as EDS? Depends how old they are. Because they have a patient who's like 30, around 30. You would expect, unless, unless you, as you get older, your ligaments tighten. So you can actually use a, what I would call a historical base spot. What could you do when you were 20? You know, oh, I could you know, do splits, I could put my head, on, my foot behind my uh, head, but, you know, foot behind my head, I could do all sorts of weird things. But as you get older, you damage the joints and actually things just stiffen up anyway. So you, you sometimes say you use a historical score. Uh, so you can still have it, but actually it's only caused the damage. Um, so you get the skin, uh, soft skin, uh, joint laxity, and uh, bruising as well. It's a collagen disorder. There's some other things as well. Now, I think the important thing about hypermobility, it's not just about stretchy joints. These patients also, there's something else going on here. I don't understand this. I don't think anybody else does understand this. These bits here. There's something going on actually outside of the joints, outside of the collagen. They have, neuro they have a neurological problem. POT syndrome. You heard this? Very good. Um, POT or tachycardic syndrome. So they stand up, pulse rate spaces, and collapse. They have an autonomic dysfunction. Um, sorry? What do you mean, Tina, talk to the There are the one of the cardiologists does it, and uh, I think some of the geriatricians do to type of testing. Uh, gas, they get gastric problems. They always get, again, problems with gut, gut which they shouldn't have, get constipated. You know, why, why are they getting this? And the really weird thing is, actually, I, which I never have expected, these guys, you get, they go to the dentist, the lignocaine the doesn't work, the local antiseptic doesn't work. Why? I don't know. It doesn't. There's, there's something wrong with it, people's nerves. I don't know what it is. So it's not just about bending and stretchy joints. Um, the, the, these are the old terminologies we use, type 1, 2, 3, 4, and all that sort of nonsense. Uh, Let me more. We use classical hypermobility, hypermobility, vascular. This is the one, please, I want you to look out for. Okay? 
Uh, that is the one that kills people. Uh, we'll go through that in a second. The, the, these ones, you, you, you wear as hen's teeth, you're not really going to see them, they're probably more key related. So you all know hypermobility. Uh, the, the type 3 is probably the, the, um, uh, the, the most common. Um, Bayton score, you said you all know that, so you don't tell you anything about that. You know about all this. Yeah? It's, it's, uh, you see people doing high heels, how on earth do you do that? Um, uh, hyperextension of the elbows, um, of the knees, the fingers. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I'm a bit hypermobile. These people, when you've got 400, they go, Ooh, are you hypermobile? Yeah? How far back does you go? So, yeah, I mean, give them, so you're not forcing that. Some people, you have to go push it back and go, oh, I'm there. Actually, when you've got people who've got very bad hypermobility, their figure come all the way back. I mean, they really are. The skin is, is, is doughy. It, uh, and actually, this, 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 the collagen is just too elastic. That's how far my, my finger can go back. I'm Mr. Nun Hypermobile. Um, my ligaments are tough. They are not stretchy at all. But they are protecting my joints. They are protecting me. If that ligament keeps going back, it's like it's getting a door and just opening it too much. Um, you put it off its hinges, and that's what happens to these joints. So the Bayton score, there is this thing called the Brighton criteria, which does seem to keep morphing every couple of years. Um, which, you know, you, can, you don't have to have a full score here, you can have other things as well. But by and large, you've all seen hypermobility. These patients are hard to treat. Because there are other issues going on with them as well. Young people, I think young people, I can't diagnose hypermobility in a, in a child. I think all children are hypermobile, mm. to, to a greater less degree. But those who are really hypermobile, you just know it. Mm. They come along and they go, woo, and they can do really weird things. <laughs> and they get the skin and go, wee! <laughs> um, and, 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 um, but there are other things. The children have it. As you get older, you stiffen up. Uh, women are loose to the men. Estrogen guys, swing, sorry. Uh, <laughs> damages the joints. Uh, people get worried. Uh, about exercising, so they get weaker. What protect? If your ligaments aren't protecting you, your muscles are toxic. Your muscles get weak. There's nothing protecting you. Things start to go wrong. Um, and actually, in subcontinent, hypermobility is exceedingly common. Like if you go to Pakistan, everybody's hypermobile. Part of that is genetic. Is, is genetic. Part of that may be malnutrition related. So, uh, and this, again, with scurvy, you get uh, your your, uh, uh, your you get issues with your. Uh, uh, college as well. And actually scurvy is, well, I see scurvy once a year. And you would have all seen patients got scurvy and you've not picked it up because nobody does. Normally it's people who are actually overweight. It's the, are they in KFC on a regular basis? There's no nutritional value. I had one lady who I was treating for Sherwin syndrome, dry eyes, dry mouth, hair loss, felt rubbish, um, uh, teeth problems. And she said to me, I feel better. She started eating vegetables, and somebody thought, scurvy. It was, and actually, then I went, I went onto the literature, and there's a case report in 1971 in the Lancet. Nine cases of people had scurvy, all presented with uh, Sherwin syndrome type symptoms. So that taught me. My patients teach me a lot. So we still, we still, still see it in this country. Um, it's a collagen problem. Uh, collagen is uh, triple helix. You know about collagen? Strong, has to be strong. These ones are a bit too elastic. They don't work properly. There's some. Uh, you can actually do biopsies uh, of the collagen, but we don't do that anymore because that's a bit invasive. There's now genetic testing, uh, and uh, guys are doing genetic testing for us for hypermobility. This is actually an NHS England service for hypermobility, and that there, there is things. We used to send our patient up to the UCH. They won't see them anymore. Um, so actually, there isn't really a local service for these people. Unfortunately, you need good physical therapists. Not all will understand this. Some do. There was a, actually there was a rheumatologist in um, William Harvey who actually did a lot of stuff on hypermobility. He's, he's sort of called it Phil Ball. But he's retired now. Uh, he's retired to play um, bass guitar in rock band, which is quite cool. Um, uh, so we can, do, we can do DNA testing. Uh, but you see, they got stretchy skin. You've, you've, you've all seen that. Have you all seen these patients? Do they? Sorry? I don't think I've ever done that to a poor patient. Mm -hmm. Straight measure. 
<laughs> you can. I mean, we all could do it a little bit, but these people come off, and, and actually, you can sometimes, literally, mm. like this. Have you got stretchy skin? I don't no. think so. No. My husband just pulled his face there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Did you get stretchy skin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
there's, there's, there's things that, you know, you, you see you see something that just don't look right, something wrong, and you kind of think, okay, is there, is there something there? Some of these syndromic conditions that can be associated with hypermobility. Marfan syndrome, you've all seen Marfan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say vanishingly rare, but it, 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 but it, but it is out there. We do see this, I mean, these, these people are doing, I mean, your, your uh, exams, you probably see them pulled out on a regular basis with people with scoliosis in the back and hypermobility, you know, that's bigger than that and high arch palate and that sort of stuff. Um, so we do all these things, do echoes for these patients. Uh, they can get eye involvement as well. Manage them, uh, joint stability. Um, I normally say to people, what's your party trick that well, I do? You know, whatever it is, don't do them. Uh, because actually, the, what you've got to do is protect their joints. Um, they get accelerated osteoarthritis. Right? The Indian rubber woman, who skeletons in the Royal London Hospital, could literally push her, uh, tie herself in the knot in the back. She can uh, like extend her back to 180 degrees. Um, her skeleton was a complete mess at the time she died. Uh, and that's when these patients get accelerated osteoarthritis. Uh, but we don't quite know why they get all these problems. Um, pain may be for a number of reasons. Uh, muscle pain, uh, joint pain. Uh, you can deal with some of these, but you can deal with the muscle strength. Um, resistance exercises, be careful because you may damage things. If you know, you all know, hitchhikers, some of you are too young to know hitchhikers back to the back. So. Yeah? Yeah, you know, good. good. Actually, I, I, quite, I like hitchhikers back to the back because what's the most useful thing in the universe? Towel, very good. You don't know, do you? Oh, yes, you do. Because uh, I actually I see a lot of people in my clinic who actually just sorry, on a little meander again, who have who have bad postures. And I just say to them, what's in the chair? I just get roll up a towel, put it behind their back to to enhance their number of doses. I mentioned hitchhikers cut for galaxy, and it's very, as you know you're getting older where they go, what? <laughs> actually I had something the other day, never heard of Monty Python, I really felt old, but there we go. <laughs> um, so, I know, it's really awful, isn't it? Please don't say what. <laughs> uh, joint stability, surgery doesn't work. People do it, really doesn't work. Can we go back one of those? The thing that you do recommend for it. Yeah, actually, I'd say, I think this, this is somebody who's a high mobility specialist. I'm not, but I, I will go through these things because these are things that have been shown to work. Um, the most, I think the most important thing with these patients is you can't expect to cure them. You will not, I will not get you symptom free. I will improve your symptoms, but you need to learn to live with, with within them. And I think it's setting that goal is important. Uh, there are things we can use. We throw drugs around, you know, muscle relaxants, I don't like it. <coughs> Benzodiazepines, Valium, I don't use. If truth be known, I think they're highly addictive and I don't like them at all. Um, some people rave by them, but I, to be honest with you, I think all they do, they just, they just zone you out slightly and you forget your pain. Most people prefer the brain to be active rather than not active. Um, pain, various causes of pain, neuropathic pain, you know, we use uh, various ways to treat that. There are drugs, there are lots of things that we can do. Um, some work, some don't. I think it's often just a massive trial and error in these patients. I think everybody's different. You know you patients, you've got, some, you've got 10 patients with exactly the same thing, you leave one thing wrong, and it will work, the next one will work too. And you just have to find what works. We don't you know, this is, this, is, this is Kent, we use bespoke. That's the word for Kent, isn't it? Yes, bespoke um, treatments. And actually, you just have to find what works for the individual patient. Um, and then you stick to it. And sometimes that's placebo. Don't knock placebos. Actually, in America, actually, you can buy placebo over the counter and it's sold as a placebo. In fact, the actual tablet is placebo spelled backwards. Ocala. <laughs> you buy it over the counter, you can actually buy it and actually you can import it to this country. It actually says it's placebo because it works. Mm. And for seeking muscle skin problems, it's about 30% effect. Fine. A lot of people will, will buy that. Um, so we use all the standard things. Uh, for a lot of these, paracetamol's on there. To be honest with you, does paracetamol actually work for our patients? No. It's useless, isn't it? Yes. Is it safe? No. GI bleeds with paracetamol. Nobody told you that, but they increase it. So it's good GI bleeds, there's ibuprofen, and there's a cardiovascular risk. Nobody talks about that. Everybody says it's safe. Everybody ignores the fact that actually most of, it, most of you people have looked at it when they have, it's got cardiovascular risks. Prasdermal liquid K does work for some patients. I have to say, I don't find it particularly effective, but for the right person it can be. I think most people find it works, it's nice and cool. Um, the only patients I really find it helpful for actually is those people who've got uh, uh, burning feet at night time, particularly sort of uh, morale, for um, um, uh, 
Oh, God. Sorry, I've just had brain death, so it's getting late. Um, it will come to me in a second. Um, muscle relaxers don't like it. Neuro, uh, tricyclics, neuroleptics, the, um, anti, the antidepressants, they can work for a lot of our patients for all areas. You've all seen these. But you know, we end up with them dosing them up. I think you're all looking a bit dosed up at the moment. <laughs> Perhaps I will. No. But don't forget the psychology. Um, these patients are living with pain. They've got the, you've got to give them um, realistic goals. You will see more of these patients in my day. They'll come to you. Doctors are crap at backs. Doctors can't cure back pain that much. There's a few people who are good at it. Some of the pain people can do well. Tony Hammond at uh, Kim's is very good at backs. He's actually one of the best people in the country for backs, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and you can do spinal interventions, but by and large, it's about looking after your back. You guys do that. Make sure they're using it properly. If they sublux something, unsublux it. So that's not my osteopathic term. Eh? Sorry? Do, do whatever you do, yes, absolutely. I don't know. It's all, all, what you do is a complete mystery to me. Um, um, look at their motions. Like these people, people often, there, there is, there, there's something else going on here apart from just stretchy joints. There, there's, there's, I can't quite, sort of, I don't think we can quite work out what it is. There's something neurological going on here as well. And, and these people really start to struggle. And emotionally, they seem to be a lot more. In a different place than other people of their own age, which may just make the pain symptoms worse. Or it may be those people who've got high mobility, who, who have bad motion place and have high mobility, then present and then which is it's all high mobility, which is why some medical people say, does this exist or doesn't it? And I think there is a danger of sort of over diagnosing some patients who just happen to have pain reasons for, 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 other, uh, for, for other processes. So psychologically, you know all these things. We need to get psychologists to work with these people, get them to function proper, properly. But hypermobility is not all negative. You've got immune disease. Your immune system may go out you can fight for you better. But if you've got hypermobility, you'll be a better dancer. They actually avoid that with us. They said it was longevity. Yeah, but you can be a better dancer. You, you show me somebody who's a professional ballerina who's not hypermobile. But they have, you have to be a gymnast. You cannot be a gymnast. Have you seen these? Um, you seen these? Uh, these people, these Chinese <coughs> gymnasts. I mean, they're not going to have a spine neck when they're thirty. But they, you know, they can do these things. Well, I could never do that. I gave up gymnastics when I was eight. I couldn't do some of those things I could do. I'm not built that way. They're better musicians. Um, have you ever? Have you, who plays the piano? My friend actually has not a fan of them. She's six or three. She plays the piano. Yeah, very late. To, to play the piano well, you have to have um, you have to be hypermobile. To play the guitar well, you have to be hypermobile. Because you can't. I, I try to I try to teach myself the piano. I'm absolutely terrible at it. I have to say, but I try to play Imagine with John Lennon. I, I can't do more than an octave with one hand. I've got short, stubby fingers, and they just don't do it. But you've got to do. Te, you've got to do ten notes with one hand. Now, uh, this was supposed to play a little bit of music, but it died, sorry about that. That was supposed to be a bit of Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff was hypermobile. And unless you've got hypermobility, you won't be able to play his music. You can actually do two octaves with one hand. Don't be <laughs> um, So there are pros for being hypermobile as well. And it, I think, it's, it's, for most people, hypermobility, it's part of the spectrum of normality. But there's a subgroup where normality <coughs> becomes pathology. And those ED4 patients, they're the ones to look out for. And they're the ones that need genetic counselling and the testing. So always to just ask, if, again, for this bit, don't take one thing, just ask them about family members with ruptures, particularly arterial ruptures at a young age. Questions? I was asked to finish at 10 o'clock. It is. 10 o'clock! <laughs> <laughs>